Hey there guys, I'm John Campia. Thanks for visiting my YouTube channel. And this is a special user submitted question. Now, every day on the John Campia show, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we take live questions. But every once in a while, somebody sends in like a tip of like $50 or more. And when they do that, which doesn't happen often, but when they do, I like to honor that by not only answering the question in the show, but I also like to make it its own standalone video. So let's get right to it. And this one comes to us from UndeadSick83 who writes, Hey John, in most of your podcasts, I listen to you, and I notice that you seem to defend the side of the filmmakers in regards to comic book or game adaptations, etc. Uh, for example, make the best movie possible, instead of the fandom culture. Whereas I, as a movie critic, am the exact opposite, which I'm sure you noticed. And I just wondered why that is. Uh, Mark Kermode once said, I respect fandom enormously, and I want to for them to be served. All right, thanks a lot for sending that in, man. And for those of you who don't follow the John Campus Show regularly, Undead Sick has been sending in a series of questions regarding that. You know, I have the belief that in comic book movies, and I love comic book movies, and most of us watching YouTube channels like this do love comic book movies, but my underlying position has always been this. The first job of the director in making a comic book film or any film that's adapted from pre-existing source material, whether it's a book or whether it's a comic book or whatever, I believe the number one responsibility of the director is to make the best movie possible. On the other hand, there are some people who believe that the number one job of the, of the director is to make as close of a fateful adaptation to the source material as possible. The problem is, many times, those two interests do not align. And that's mostly because different mediums need their stories told in different ways. Just because something works on a printed page, whether it's a book or a comic book, does not mean it's going to translate well or work well on a screen, whether it's a big screen as a movie or a small screen. And I always say, listen, the filmmakers need to be able to take liberties, and if they need to, lots of liberties with the source material in order to make the best movie possible. The examples I often fall back on is like, look at, I don't know, Captain America Civil War. That movie, some people consider to be the greatest comic book movie ever made. But it's nothing like the comic book story. Yeah, there are certain themes that it borrows from, but it's really nothing like. If you've read the Civil War comic story, you know that the movie is hardly anything like it. X-Men Days of Future Past. Also, to me, a top 10 greatest comic book movie ever made. If you look back at the actual comic book story, yeah, it borrows some thematic similarities, but other than that, it's a completely different movie. And those are some of the best comic book movies ever made because the job of the director is to make the best movie possible. Now, where Undeg Six says, you know, I on one hand say I take the position of the filmmakers that they should make the best movie possible, whereas there's another side that says, no, we should serve the fans. I would argue this. The two are not mutually exclusive. You see, I believe the filmmaker is doing a service to the fans and is ultimately servicing the fans by making the best movie possible. You don't make the fans happy by staying really close to the source material, but have it not turn out to be all that great of a movie. Did Joe and Anthony Russo not serve the fandom by making the best Captain America Civil War movie possible? Of course we did. Of course they did, I should say. It is a false distinction to say you either make the best movie possible or you serve the fandom. No, you serve the fandom by making the best movie possible and that is always the way it should go there's another problem with this idea of oh we should serve the interests of the fans here's the other problem with that that position assumes that all fandom thinks alike and that is absolutely not true whether it's in star wars or comic books or star trek i often hear people online say the fans want this and i often have to step in and correct them say no 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 the fans don't want that, you want that. And maybe a number of other fans that you know also happen to share your point of view. But do not make the mistake of thinking that just because you think that, and a number of other people that you know think that, that you speak for all of us and that you want what all of us want. That is simply not true. So when you say we should either do, we should either have the filmmaker make the film that they think is best, or we should do what the fans want, that is a gross misrepresentation of what the fans are. The fans don't have one point of view. The fans do not share one opinion. 
The fans don't even just have two separate camps of opinion. The fans are as divided as anything else. We, a thousand different fans will have a thousand different points of view and want a thousand different things. It's just that simple. And we often make the mistake as film fans saying just because me and the people I talk to think one way, that means everybody does. And that's just not the case. Hell, just look at Star Wars right now. You know, and you'll get people on both sides of the Star Wars bake saying, no, the fans like this. Well, no, no, no. There's a lot of fans who you do not represent. And then the others say, no, the fans want this. Uh, no, you do not represent all the fans. And so that's the problem I see in that sort of logic. The logic of you either have to have the filmmaker make the best movie possible or you do what the fans want. Two enormous, enormous fallacies there. One, assuming that the two are mutually exclusive, when in reality, the filmmaker making the best film possible is servicing the fans. And the second fallacy is the notion that all the fans speak with one common voice, and they simply do not. What you may want in an upcoming comic book adaptation is not necessarily what other fans want in an upcoming comic book adaptation, and therefore, neither they nor you speak on behalf of the fans. Anyway, that's just sort of my way of taking a look at this. How do you guys feel about that topic? I want to know your interpretation of that. Jump down to the comments section below and let me know your thoughts. All right, guys, that will do it for me for this video. Thank you so much for being here. My name is John Campia, and until the next video, bye-bye.